Congratulations, you've just built a beautiful Microsoft Access database. Technically sound, relationships are perfect, queries that get to the heart of the data, and maybe even some easy to use forms and some even easier to read reports. Very cool. And now the questions. How do I run the queries? How do I enter information into the tables? Which form should I open? How do I view or print a report? What do I do when I'm finished? In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Access macros to open forms, run or print reports, view query results, or perform other actions throughout your beautiful database. Macros or automatic actions can be a great way of guiding users through the many great features in your database. They can also help to cut down on errors and reduce some of those how-to questions that can turn a great Microsoft Access database project into a giant pain in the neck. And you don't want that. So if you're looking for a way to add ease of use and automation to your database project, then stick around while I show you how to use macros in Microsoft Access databases. Unlike Excel macros, which are recorded, in Microsoft Access, macros are built or constructed from available commands. To create a macro in Microsoft Access, you'll need to navigate to the Create tab and then over to Macro. When the window opens, you'll be able to choose from an available list of actions or you can expand that list by selecting the Show All Actions button at the top of the screen. This expands the list and provides you several more actions to choose from. To build the macro, just select your actions in the order that you'd like them to work. Next, add the details and then close and save the macro. When closed and saved, the macro will appear in the navigation pane on the left side of the screen. One way to use your macro is to assign it to a button. To assign it to a button, just move to the Design tab, and then from the list of objects, select Button. Add your button to the form by clicking, and then to assign the macro, just right-click the button and select Properties. Under the Event tab, select the event for the button. In this case, it's a button, so you'll click it. And then select your macro from the available list. You can format the button by selecting the formatting tools on the Form Design Tools ribbon. And to change your text on the button, just simply click on the button and type the name of the button or the name of the command if that's what you'd like to see. After returning the form to form view, you can use the button simply by clicking it. Macro actions include everything from 
deleting an object to closing the database, importing spreadsheets to opening forms, queries, and reports. You can even have macros run automatically when the database opens by renaming them to auto exec. Macros can also be organized into groups by selecting sub macro from the list of actions and then adding the macro actions in underneath and inside of the subgroup. Macros can then be assigned to objects by just selecting the action or event and then selecting the sub macro inside of the larger macro. Creating subgroups lets you organize your macros by the type of action that the macros actually perform. Whether you're upgrading an existing project that maybe you've inherited, or you're building an access database project from scratch, macros are a great way to add ease of navigation and functionality to your database project. That first macro that I showed to open a form is an easy way to get started and a great addition to any project that contains forms. So until our next video, good luck in your access endeavors. Thanks for joining me, and I'm Wayne.